Bible says God's people will be raised because death's deadly sting has been plucked. Yeah. Powerful, isn't it? Does the apostle? It's been plucked yeah. and detoxicated, removed. <laughs> You're gone, buddy, because we have the victory in yeah, Jesus. Right. We need to grab a hold of it. That is the gospel. Yeah. That is good news. Yeah. That is good news. And I tell you something today, death is powerless to the living believer. I know it's sad. I know you will miss me and you'll cry when I die. Maybe. So on Resurrection Sunday, why do we celebrate Resurrection Sunday? Because we celebrate it because Jesus' resurrection validates that he was God. On Resurrection Sunday, Jesus claimed, he made this statement, I am the resurrection and the life. Whosoever believes in me, whosoever shall have life. And I tell you, Jesus gives his resurrection life to you and to me. You understand what I'm saying? And we hate sickness, we hate cancer, we hate all that horrible stuff, and we will continue to pray. That's right. But there's something glorious waiting for us. There's a victory waiting for us, and it was won on Resurrection Sunday. And we need to remind us, and we can share in that triumph over death. 1 John chapter 5, verses 11 and 12 says this, This is my testimony, that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. Everyone say, whoever. The Bible says, whoever has the Son has life. And whoever doesn't have the Son doesn't have it. I want to have the Son. I want to have Christ in my life. This is the gospel, and that's good news. That is the good news of the gospel. And unfortunately, I love fish and chips. How many people love fish and chips? How many people love chocolate rabbits? But the... No? (laughs) But the good news is, of Resurrection Sunday, is that we can have eternal life. When that day comes, I'm no longer a slave to sin. I am a child of God. And we, you know... I. Uh, in Toowoomba, I visited a lady. She's about 104 or something. She's a pastor. Why won't God take me to heaven? I don't know. She says, I'm, she said, I've lived a good life. She just wanted to be with Jesus. And I wasn't quite sure how to pray. <laughs> um, okay, Lord bless her. But the good news is the gospel. You know, our lives are accountable to God. We have sinned, and we have sinned against God. And sin is a deadly poison. And it leads to spiritual death. But the good news of what God has done through Christ, that Jesus has died for your sin and my sin. That's the gospel. And the Bible says this, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord and repents shall be saved. That is the good news. That's what Resurrection Sunday is all about. And it's amazing when Paul was writing some of these scriptures, he encountered, we've got some buzzing going on here, don't we? It's, it's just bugs in the system. It's, I, I think... Rick, you've got something, it's your watch. Your watch is talking to the PA system. You're doing good, Rick. You're great to everybody. 
he was in hospital this week and uh, they took out a bit of his brain. <laughs> I went up to him and I says, I can't hear a New Zealand accent. Oh. I didn't say that, just kidding. But he was here the next day preparing his team for Easter. Yeah. I salute this guy. That's great. <laughs> You know, um, just as we have some crazy ideas and fish, and the focus seems to move away from the gospel towards other things, and Paul had similar crazy ideas in the church in Corinth, and um, they misunderstood the gospel in, this, in the Corinth church, and what they were doing was they... Um, Increase their allegiance to the person who water baptized them, and they would follow that person and criticize other leaders who didn't baptize them. It was creating a major problem in the Corinthian church. And um, Paul didn't want to start a cult, a group of people to follow him. So he says in this particular passage in 1 Corinthians 1, 17, it's on the screen. It says this, For Christ didn't send me, he didn't send me to baptise, but to preach the gospel. Not with fancy words, not with eloquence, lest the cross of Christ loses its power. Can you see what's happening here? He's not degrading water baptism. Not at all. There was an issue in the church that people were following the wrong people. People were following those who were baptised. And, and also this second issue in Corinth that was going on, they looked towards their speakers, their people, their pastors to perform when they spoke. They looked towards eloquent words, powerful speeches, and they clapped their hands and they thought, oh, that's powerful. So what was going on was, it was more about performance. When the person stood up and preached the gospel, in Corinth, they were performing and they all clapped. And Paul said, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to water baptise you and I'm not going to have any fancy talk. I'm just going to give you the gospel. Because if I do something else, I'm removing the power of the gospel away and the attention comes onto me. That's what he says in this particular verse. He says the gospel is not a public display. The gospel is not about a polished speech. The gospel is not about how I talk. The gospel is good news about Jesus yeah, and right. Jesus only. Right. It's not about chocolate. That's right. Brumbies. Bilbies. It's not about fish and chips, although I love fish and chips and I love chocolate. But it, the gospel. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's about a risen Christ who went and took my sin onto Calvary and rose again and I can follow through by faith. Can you hear and say amen to that? Yeah. And so the Apostle Paul had this problem and he said, I'm not going to use any tricky speeches. I'm not going to use tricky words. No fancy words. No performance. No fish and chips. No chocolate eggs. Now some people, he says this in verse 17, I've come to preach the gospel. And he knew the power of the gospel can change a life, can transform a life. I am convinced that fish and chips cannot transform my life. Chocolate may put on a few kilos, but Paul says my fancy talk, my fish and chips cannot transform my life, only the gospel. That's right. So church, I want us to understand what is the gospel. Okay? Is that alright? 
because it is so important. We have our fish and chips, yes, 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 yes. We have our chocolates, yes, 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 yes. We, and we have all our fun, but our focus yeah. is the gospel. Very good, man. And I don't want to empty the cross of its power. I don't want to do that. I don't want to add any of my ideas to the gospel. When I start to do that, I remove the power. I don't want to add to it because I believe God's wisdom and God's power is in Christ alone, not in fish and chips. Okay? That is the gospel. And the gospel, and I don't care what they say in the media, what some movie star says about the gospel, says about Christians, I care what Jesus says. Okay? And what Jesus says about I am the resurrection of life. I'm not going to allow my life to be formed by the opinions of other people. I'm not allowing my life to be constrained to be constrained by fish and chips or Cadbury <laughs> Bilbies. <laughs> it's the gospel. It is the gospel, okay? And the gospel can do what we can't do. It frees us from the slavery of sin. Yeah, that's true. Now, look at the next screen just for a moment. I don't know if you've been down to the Burley Bowls. <laughs> have, you, have you ever seen the Burley Bowls down Burley Heads? And, or they're all in white and I pray Rick when I get to be 95 I don't go there. But you know, <laughs> but, you know I know, you know, and, and they have these balls and they go and Yes, Marge! Yes, Marge! We're going to throw the ball! And they throw the ball. I would say, we sit in the coffee shop opposite and watch them, you know. Hmm. Okay. But the thing is, those balls have a bias inside them. Right? And the harder you throw it, you can never throw those balls straight. They always curve. And likewise, the Bible says we were born in sin. We have a bias within us. And whatever we try to do, we cannot break that bias. We just keep curving all the time. We just keep sinning all the time. We have no control over it at all. Romans 3 says all have sinned and fallen short. And the gospel puts us in right stead with God. He removes that sin bias. He takes it upon himself. Your sin bias, my sin bias, and he nails it to the cross and we can have victory. And we're no longer controlled by that old sinful nature. I'm telling you something. Fish and chips can't do that. And chocolate bilbies can't Remove my brokenness and my sin. And we've seen enough horror in our world. We realise there's sin in the world. We've seen the brokenness of humanity and the destruction it brings. And I'm telling you, there's only one message, and that's the message of Jesus. That's the gospel message. A lot of people think it's old-fashioned. It's 2,000 years old. And goat herders in the back of the desert. What do they know? But this is the gospel. And it is empowered by the Holy Spirit. Right. And I love the Holy Spirit working us because He brings such change into our lives. You know, and a lot of people are very offended by the gospel. One Corinthians one eighteen. Just have a look at this verse. And today, tolerance. Tolerance is the highest value in our culture. To be tolerant of everything. To tolerate everything. Tolerate this religion, tolerate that religion, tolerate that sexual ideology, tolerate this, let's all be kind and tolerate everything. That's our highest value in our culture at the moment, right now. But tolerance is now very intolerant of the gospel. Yeah. When you stand up, <laughs> When you stand up and say there is only one way to heaven, there is only one gospel, there is only one message, there is only one true God, you have moved into the camp of the intolerant. And yet Paul says this. 
He says the gospel message is stupid. Everyone say stupid. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say stupid. <laughs> the gospel message is stupid. It's foolishness to, to those people who are perishing. It doesn't make sense. But to us, to those who are born.